Hi guys, welcome back to the second video of this new semester and uh, we're going to continue talking about transformations here in the context of square roots and cube roots. But first to recap what we talked about on uh, last lesson, uh, we saw how functions in general, all of which have graphs, can be transformed in certain ways, right? Functions in general, f of x, can be transformed up or down, left or right. They can be vertically stretched or shrunk, horizontally stretched or shrunk, even flipped or reflected over the x and y axis, depending on uh, how you change the parent or the original general function by uh, maybe multiplying in front, changing a value for a, uh, maybe multiplying inside the function itself, changing uh, what we would call b, uh, adding or subtracting inside the function, whatever we're given as the parent, which would change h, and lastly, adding or subtracting towards the outside of our function, which would change k. And <clears throat> we saw how this affected graphs. We saw how um, these individual transformations can occur, but also how they can occur more than once. We're going to look at that again today, but in today's lesson, we're going to look at square roots and cube roots um, in particular. So. For example, let's call a new parent, okay, f of x equals the square root of x. This is a new parent. Um, it's given a name. It could be called h of x, j of x. doesn't matter what the name is, but however we transform this square root, however we change this, it should still have a square root, it should still have x, and whatever else changes it means it should have a different name. So for example, down here, g of x, this is an example of a transformed square root function uh, because we have a lot of other things going on here, right? We've changed a, b, h, or k around the square root or inside of it, and we want to describe how this original parent was transformed to produce this child or this transformed function. So, did a change? Did b change? Did h did K change? Let's ask these questions and then um, see <clears throat> what the result is. So, did A change? In other words, did we, instead of having an F, we have a square root, did we multiply in front of our square root? And in this case, we did. We multiplied by a negative as well as a 9. Now, when you see the word negative or when you think the word negative, you need to be thinking the word reflect or reflection. Indeed, in this case, we have a reflection across or over the x-axis. In other words, um, the graph of a square root looks like a jump up towards the right. But when we graph this function, what's going to happen is it's going to flip that upside down. Instead of jumping up towards the right, it's now going to head down towards the right. It's going to flip over the x-axis because of that negative that's in front because uh, a has changed to have a negative number. What else has changed in front of the square root? We have a 9 there as well, right? We're multiplying by a number bigger than 1, okay? 9 is bigger than 1. Therefore, we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 9. In other words, if you go to desmos.com backslash graphing and you graph this function and you compare it to this original square root parent, what's going to happen is that this graph is going to vertically stretch. That jump that we're talking about is now going to be farther away from um, the x-axis. Um, something else that's happening, okay, so a has changed, right? Negative 9 in front of the square root has changed. What else has changed? We have a number inside the square root next to x that in this case is being subtracted. So what does that change? It changes h. So another transformation we're going to look for is something that happens either left or right. Now, when you think about what happens here, you could graph this yourself and see that indeed this graph will move locations or shift five units right, not left. Okay. When we subtract next to x, we move to the right. When we add next to x, we move to the left, or shift to the left. means the same thing. 
Okay, so it's another transformation happening in this uh, problem as well. And lastly, we're subtracting a number off to the side, okay? Subtracting two, that changes K, right? That transforms the original parent. It changes it. How does it change it? Well, we're, at, we're, we're uh, subtracting off to the side. That means we're moving either up or down. And in this case, because we're subtracting, we're shifting uh, down two units, or two units down. Okay. Either way you want to describe that. So there's four transformations happening here. Um, the negative in front is a reflection over the x-axis in particular. Nine being multiplied in front, also a change to A means a vertical stretch, right, by a factor of nine in this case. Five subtracted inside changes H, means we're going five units to the right. The whole graph is going to move towards the right by five and down by two. Uh, the location of where this starts will change, in other words, because of H and K moving the graph itself. So that is how you describe a transformation. Same thing that we talked about in our last lesson. A's, B's, H's, and K's are what we're evaluating only in a new context for square roots or, as we'll see, cube roots as well. So uh, in this problem here, okay, what's happening is that we're given the words or we're given the description, right? We're shifting six units right, eight units up, have a y-axis reflection. These are all different types of transformations, right? These change things like A, B, H, or K. We want to see what's going to happen when we apply these transformations to this parent function. So in this case, we're talking about a cube root, right? <clears throat> what we'll see is that um, because we're moving six units to the right, well, first of all, we need to start by changing the name here, right? We're making a transformed function. It's not going to be the same thing, so it should have a new name. Just like parents usually have different names than children, or even if it is the same name, it's usually like Ryan Jr. or um, something like that, okay? It's a different name because it's a different function. It's going to be somewhat similar. It's still going to have um, a cube root, and it will still have x inside that cube root. Right? Compared to the parent, the child will still have that, but other things will happen. So what else will happen? Well, we're moving six units to the right, so what does that change? When we move to the right, we just talked about this, we change H. Right? We subtract next to X. And uh, in this case, that would be X minus 6. Now, you can always write parentheses. I'm going to go ahead and recommend that. Um, in this case, you'll need it, actually, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But Putting parentheses around left or right movement never hurts. I could have done the same thing here. This doesn't change anything, okay? Now, in this problem, it's going to be necessary, so just be careful about that, but um, putting parentheses around X and H never hurts. So that's one thing now. Six units to the right, we change H. Good. Eight units up, okay? So in this case, we're obviously changing K. And uh, because we're going up, we should be adding by a number off to the side. In this case, that is add 8. Notice that 8 is not under the cube root symbol, right? It's not under that little box. It's off to the side, okay? It's not inside your function. Anything that happens vertically, like moving up or down, or vertically stretching or shrinking, or flipping over the x-axis vertically, those things on the outside are vertical movements. Everything inside the square root or cube root is going to deal with left or right or horizontal stretches or shrinks. So be careful of that distinction. Outside means vertical, inside means something horizontal. And uh, we do have something that is happening inside besides, so we talked about uh, eight units up, six units right. We do have something else happening inside of our function, right? We have a y-axis reflection. And that's why these parentheses are important because a reflection over the y-axis, or a y-axis reflection, flips our graph from left to right or right to left, okay? In other words, this graph here for a cube root, it's like an S, we're gonna talk about that more in our next video, but this S is gonna flip to be a backwards S, kind of like uh, Bizarro. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
we will need a negative. Remember, reflection means negative. We will have a negative on the inside of our cube root where B is, but B is in front of this parentheses. Okay? That negative should distribute or be able to be distributed to both that X and negative 6. Um, so, uh, Sorry about that. So uh, this would be our transform child function. Uh, we have moved up by 8, we changed k. We have moved right by 6, we move, uh, changed h. We have changed b, b uh, by reflecting over the y-axis. That leaves us with one more thing that I want to talk about. We've learned how to uh, write transformed functions. We learned how to describe them. Now I just want to go over matching a little bit because we have not talked about one more type of transformation. Okay. And uh, that type is horizontal. So I wanted to emphasize this again. Horizontal transformations are the trickiest ones. And that's because you have to remember a key word for them and that is to flip, right? You're working with the reciprocal of whatever you're given. So what I have here and what I want you or I challenge you to do before I move further is try to take a look at these transformed functions, right? We have um, a type of square root function, but a, b, h, or k has changed. Same thing here, and then for cube roots, uh, likewise. What I want you to determine is, does a go in this, 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 or this blank, right? This describes the transformation of either a square or cube root parent function. Which one does it match? Do the same for all four letters. You can pause the video here if you would like. And um, <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to go over these now. So what I would start with is the top, right? I have a negative in front. What does that mean? Negative in front means reflection over the x-axis. So I can already eliminate A and C, right? This is a reflection over the x-axis, not the y-axis. So it's either got to be B or D. The trick is we have to remember that 5 on the outside, right, A changes here, always means something vertical. So we have a vertical stretch in this case by 5. Um, so I can already tell that B is going to be my correct answer. Right? X-axis reflection, that negative in front, vertical stretch by 5, multiplying in front by a number bigger than 1, and we do have a horizontal stretch. Now, if you just look at this fraction, it looks like it's less than 1, and it, that's true. 7 over 8 is less than 1. But this is where it's important to remember uh, we're multiplying inside, we're changing B, this is something horizontal. We always need to flip whatever number we're looking at that we're multiplying by. We're multiplying by 7 over 8, flip it to be 8 over 7. When you describe that transformation, now we're looking at 8 over 7 instead of 7 over 8. B is correct, so we've gotten one down. Uh, G of x here, next line down, next transformed function um, of a square root. What matches this as far as the description? Again, we have an x-axis reflection. You should already see that this is going to be answer choice D, because it's the only other one that has an x-axis reflection. But why does everything else work? Well, 8 over 7 is bigger than 1. Right? And we don't flip anything that's vertical. This is a vertical stretch by 8 over 7. We only flip horizontal transformations. So that 1 over 5 will flip to a 5 over 1, and 5 divided by 1 is just 5. This is a horizontal stretch by 5 when we flip it. Okay? That leaves us with the last two transformations here, cube roots. Um, <clears throat> Okay. We see we have a negative on the inside, so that's why that's a y-axis reflection. Both of these have a y-axis reflection. So far, so good. The question is, and uh, you can't see H or K here, so you have to think about this. This is where some students get confused. Uh, does 9 here mean that we're moving right by 9 or down by 9? Does 4 here mean we're moving right by 4 or down by 4? You do need to be able to know your H's versus your K's. Remember, okay, 
when you change h on the inside of your square or cube root, you're moving left or right. When you're changing k on the outside, you're moving up or down. So in this case, uh, that 4 means we're moving down. That 9 means we're moving to the right. And uh, that would be a. That leaves us with one more here. This should match with c. Let's uh, check. Uh, negative on the inside, y-axis reflection, check. Changing h, this is four units to the right because we're subtracting next to x, that's correct. Lastly, subtracting off to the side is nine units down, that changes k. This is indeed correct. These are how we would match our descriptions to our transformed functions. So, <clears throat> what have we learned? We have learned that um, for square and cube roots, the same thing that we talked about in our last class, right? For functions in general, a's, b's, h's, and k's can change. That changes our parent of f of x to some sort of child function or transformed function. Same thing here. You start with a square root or a cube root, okay? And you can change things either in front or off to the side or inside that square or cube root. You still have a's, b's, h's, and k's. So that still will help you to determine the type of transformed function that you might be looking at or how you want to describe one that you're given. Um, and then always, as we've talked about, and we're going to get into this more on uh, our next video as well, if you want to start graphing some of these, you'll be ahead of the game, desmos.com backslash graphing. If you start graphing these types of functions, you'll see how they uh, visually vertically stretch or shrink, horizontally stretch or shrink reflect or flip over the x-axis, reflect or flip over the y-axis, how they move up or down, um, left or right. So these are the sorts of um, transformations we're going to keep dealing with throughout the semester. It's a very important topic. That's why we're emphasizing it here. And it's going to be very helpful uh, as we move into graphing and finding key features of graphs. So um, hopefully this helped. Always reach out to me if you have questions, and I will see you next time.